What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Nerdy Mark channel. I am Sid the Nerdy Mark and I'm actually gonna do a really quick raw kind of a video. So I was gonna do a whole Nerdy Mark wrestling show kind of a thing um, about, you know, AEW, NXT, TakeOver, all that good stuff. I had a whole thing planned out. I, I even talked about this on my Mental Health Monday. I said that I was gonna do a Nerdy Mark wrestling show where I would talk about Takeover Stand and Deliver, the fallout of Takeover Stand and Deliver, AEW, the Jericho podcast, quick thoughts on Mania. Um, but, you know, and I will talk a little bit about, about it. Well, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about it right now. And then I want to talk about the topic at hand. So, uh, first of all, I thought WrestleMania night one was a solid show. I think the biggest MVP of them all was Bad Bunny. Like, he has definitely set the bar high for um, celebrity guests in pro wrestling. So, I mean, kudos to Bad Bunny. And, you know, that it's just, it's just so refreshing to actually see a celebrity who actually cares about pro wrestling doing work. Like, it's crazy. Like, like Wale is fantastic. Mega Ran was really cool to see. But, you see, they didn't really, like, get physical. Bad Bunny got freaking physical, and it was freaking great to see, you know? But, uh, yeah, that was great. It was great to see Bianca Belair becoming SmackDown Women's Champion. Uh, night two, we had, uh, you know, uh, obviously... Uh, well, well, let's go back to night one. Um, I think it was really interesting that before... First of all, it's just really cool to have crowds. Um, although, you know, we did... Apparently, cases of COVID went up after... The show uh surprise surprise um you know but it was just so cool to see like fans there and it was just really really it was, it was a good overall good presentation for the entire um two nights now a lot of people talked about you know uh the fiend getting buried in at mania now i did do a little quick TikTok about it and also uploaded it as like a short because apparently I can upload shorts now, which is cool. Um, I think that, you know, yeah, would, it, would I have been happy if The Fiend won? For sure. But maybe there's there's more story going on here. Like, because see, the thing with Bray Wyatt, he's an expert storyteller and this isn't over, right? See, The Fiend as a character is going through a story the Fiend is a story. It's not just a wrestler. He, he's beyond just the wrestler. He's beyond just, you know, the man who works at WWE, Wyndham Rotunda, right? He's way beyond that. The Fiend is an entity in itself. Yes, he lost, but the thing is he has to kind of find himself now. Like, see, like, like Bray Wyatt, after the match... Bray Wyatt posted a picture of Samson and uh, Delilah cutting his hair, um, which is where obviously he derived all his strength, right? In the Bible, there was a you know character named Samson and you know uh, Delilah, his his love. He was blinded by Delilah's love that, and she let him sleep on his lap. And while he was sleeping, she cut his hair, right? Same thing, and he kind of equ equates what happened at Mania to that. So. Very interesting. So he still keeps me intrigued as to what's going to happen next. So I'm really looking forward to see um, where the Fiend goes from there, honestly. Would have been cool if he won, but it is what it is. Uh, Rhea Ripley winning the Raw Women's Championship was great. Uh, Roman Reigns versus Edge versus, um, you know, uh, versus Daniel Bryan was a really good match. Uh, Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens was a sleeper hit. And uh, it was just great to see Logan Paul leading a stunner, um, as always. <laughs> it's just good because, you know, I, you all know how much I love Logan Paul. No, not really. I'm not a big fan of him or Jake Paul, for that matter. Um, what else, man? Uh, yeah, overall, a decent night of wrestling. for, for the, And it was, like I said, great to see the crowds. Back again, Seth Rollins versus Cesaro was a very good match. Also a sleeper hit, I would feel. Actually, Seth Rollins versus Cesaro was a little bit better than Zayn versus Owens. But Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn, I mean, these two are destined to do this forever. Uh, so, 
is just it's always great to see these two go go at it. it always is so yeah uh thumbs up to them uh i'm gonna give night one of wrestlemania a thumbs up i'm gonna give night two of wrestlemania the bar so that was there um nxt takeover stand and deliver fantastic show both across both nights absolutely wonderful show just really loved it yes takeover was way better than wrestlemania i mean come on <laughs> Uh, Kushida versus Pete Dunne was a really good match. Just two amazing technical wrestlers. Um, the um, Tommaso Ciampa versus Walter, fantastic match. Absolutely brutal. Uh, the whole spot with Walter chopping the table in half, the announcer table in half. Either that, either his chops were that strong, or the table is that weak. You know. Anyway, um, that was great. Raquel Gonzalez versus Io Shirai, really good match. Um, I had said that I wanted Io to have like an Asuka-like reign uh, as, as NXT Women's Champion where she finally has to uh, re relinquish the title because, you know, maybe she's going up to Raw or SmackDown, which honestly, I don't want her to go to Raw or SmackDown uh, at this point. Just let her stay on NXT. Um, I would honestly not mind Asuka coming back to NXT and teaming up with Io Shirai and have them dominate the women's tag team division in NXT. That would be really cool to see for me. But anyway, um, but yeah, uh, but Raquel Gonzalez, congratulations. Very well deserved. Really, really liked it. Just really good stuff. Um, a, uh, NXT, uh, moving to Tuesdays, I think it was a great move. Um, NXT was, was, a, was a great show. Most of it was just a recap of TakeOver, Stand and Deliver, which is fine. Um, great moment with uh, Raquel Gonzalez. Um, of course, we had Taya Valkyrie, now Frankie Monet, debuting. So that was interesting. Um, I want to see where that goes. Although I was a little scared when Raquel Gonzalez said she was going to shove that cute little puppy up her ass. And um, like, I, I don't think I want that. That's animal cruelty. Come on, Raquel. Um, I get it, you're a heel, but, you know, be, be kind to animals, please. Uh, but anyway, but, you know, that dog is really adorable. Like, I, I will say that's that's a cute puppy. I, you know, anyway, <laughs> anyways, um, looking forward to see what Taya Valkyrie or, well, Frankie Monet, as she's called now, uh, do in NXT. Apparently, she herself chose that name. So, you know, there you go. But yeah, yeah. Um, it was interesting to see that, but then of course we had Rhea Ripley and the the Raw Women's Champion, new Raw Women's Champion Rhea Ripley, and the new SmackDown Women's Champion Bianca Belair come back down to NXT and uh, pose with Raquel Gonzalez with their titles. That was a really good moment. I very much enjoyed that. Um, just just good feels really felt good. Um, uh, Santos Escobar versus Kushida was a really good match. Uh, Kushida with the upset over Escobar. Um, the upset over Escobar, even though uh, Kushida was an IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. Um, but hey, we're, we're totally not... But hey, that didn't happen because it's not... didn't happen in WWE. Because New Japan Pro Wrestling doesn't exist. Anyway. <laughs> unless it's about... Unless it's Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly, in which case we're going to borrow stock footage from them. You know? Anyway, um, whatever. Um, I think that was a good match. Uh, really glad that Kushida, he's been here, what, two, two, three years, and this is his first title. Uh, you know what? Congratulations to Kushida. I think Santos Escobar has done amazing things with the title, but honestly, I think he's ready to move up. I think he's ready to go for the North American title. Like, that's, that's really where I kind of see him right now is the North American title picture. I love Karrion Cross's promo in the beginning. That was good stuff. It's just really good to see Karrion Cross with the NXT title. Um, and this time, hopefully, he'll they will give him a lengthy run, barring injuries. Um, please be careful, Karrion Cross. Don't we want you to have a good title reign? Um, you know, I would love to see Bronson Reed versus Karrion Cross again. That would be a really good match. Um, but I don't know, man, who else is there right now, though, on NXT? Uh, maybe Parker Bordeaux, who was recently signed on to NXT. Maybe he challenges Cross for the title. Um, maybe it's, uh, Valter, 
versus uh, I would love to see Walter, Walter versus Karrion Cross at some point. Timothy Thatcher versus Karrion Cross would be damn good. So that could be interesting. Um, so a lot of, lot of dream matches. I mean, Kyle O'Reilly versus Karrion Cross. That would be amazing. Speaking of Kyle O'Reilly and Undisputed Era, we did have also um, Roderick Strong and Marina Shafir go into uh, William Regal's office and basically hand, Roderick Strong hands in his resignation from NXT. This is interesting. I wonder what they're, what's happening with Roderick Strong. Um, but it's kind of interesting. He handed in his res resignation in light of everything that's been happening, which I'm going to talk about in just a sec. Um, the main event was really good. Um, the big eight person tag match was really cool. Had some, it was just had some fun moments. Finally, Indy Hartwell gets her man. Carry, you know, uh, Dexter Loomis carries her to the back. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I'm guessing we're getting an Indy Hartwell face turn at some point. That should be cool. But yeah, um, overall, NXT was a really good show. Thumbs up. Um, AEW. Fantastic show, heel young bucks injected into my veins. God damn it! Um, but yeah, that was really good. I I, I loved uh, heel young bucks. I loved um, you know. It, and the thing is, when they came out uh, for their match, it looked like, it felt like almost they were like being controlled by Don Callis. Like just the expression on their face was like the stony expression, and it, it was as if they were being controlled. Um, just thought that was interesting to see. Um, I thought that the match was fantastic. I mean, uh, the Bucks versus Pac and Ray Phoenix. This is four, you know, premier athletes going at it. So, of course, it's going to be really good. Um, I'm loving the Inner Circle's face run with Jericho basically doing all the talking. That That's just really good stuff. Um, you know, uh, I'm also really liking that it looks like Miro's finally getting a singles push. Like... He's been in the company for a year now, so, and he had so much promise when he came in, and they just paired him up with uh, freaking Kip Sabian, and they feuded with the best friends for, like, 20 years, so finally he's getting, you know, breaking away from Kip Sabian. That's going to be good. Just let him be a monster heel and tear through the goddamn division, and eventually, I wouldn't mind if he's the one who beats Darby Allen for the for the uh, TNT Championship. That would be really cool um, to see Miro with the TNT title. I could even see him eventually go and get the AEW title. Like, I could totally see it. Anyway, uh, we had uh, some cool stuff. Uh, you know, it looks like Ed, not Edge, Christian Cage is feuding with um, Team Taz. So that should be interesting. Um, the main event was really good. Uh, Dax Harwood versus Chris Jericho. Really good match. Mike Tyson is made an honorary member of the Inner Circle afterwards. That was good stuff. Um, you know, uh, obviously, Anthony Agogo gets a, gets a match and gets to show off his skill now that, you know, QT Marshall and him and Aaron Solo and um, uh, Nick Camarado, I think, have all turned heel. And, you know, now it's, they're just called The Factory and not QT's Factory. Um, missed opportunity, man. Calling it the QT Factory. You know, that was actually a, a line by my buddy John from Armbar Audio. So, yeah, but um, just a good show, man. Uh, AEW and NXT both putting, putting on good shows. Um, I would say, again, um, I mean, NXT is kind of just reeling in from the, the events of Stand and Deliver, and I guess uh, next week we're going to hear from Kyle O'Reilly. Um, I'm looking forward to see what they do with AEW next week. AEW is always, always has my interest, always, ha you know, makes me want to see more, and almost makes me disappointed that we're not getting another episode tomorrow. <laughs> um, it is, it's, but see, that's the thing. They're doing a great job of keeping my interest, right? Um, so with that being said, uh, unfortunately, we got to talk about something a little bit more tragic. Now, um, the day I'm recording this is April 15th, and it's the one year anniversary of one of the biggest tragic events in all of professional wrestling. I'm talking about all of those releases that WWE did, uh, which included people like Leo Rush, EC3, um, Miro, well, Rusev at that time. Um, 
shoot, there's so many people. The list just kept going, you know, name after name after name just came. Drake Maverick, well, he later on was reinstated. It was all a storyline, which is... I don't know. I still don't know how I feel about that. I mean, it's cool things he's doing with Killian Dane, but still. Oh, yeah. MSK are the new NXT Tag Team Champions, by the way. Congratulations to them. I'm sorry. I totally forgot. That was cool. Um, but anyway, back to this. Oh, yeah. And Jordan Devlin versus uh, uh, Santos Escobar was a really good match. You know, sorry. I'm going to be jumping here and there because I haven't scripted any of this. I haven't done. I haven't planned it out. Um, I was going to do, like I said, I was going to do a whole uh, thing where I do the whole, like, you know, set up a live stream kind of a thing. But I just said I'm just going to turn on the camera and record today. So, yeah, but like I said, this whole and then well, this was like a whole this whole you know, last year was pretty much where there was this huge mass exodus. Their whole WWE doing their spring cleaning, which means letting go of a crap ton of roster people in on their roster also include that included in that list was also uh last year was also people like zach Ryder now matt cardona and uh brian myers uh formerly known as kurt hawkins heath slater which i forgot what he what he goes by now on impact but uh yeah um that it's just been crazy i'm sorry i got the hiccups all of a sudden um I think, uh, but now this year, this year is no different. This year, they decided to do the same. This year, they decided to uh, let go of a few more people, and I'm gonna have the names right here. Uh, so many people have been released from WWE. Uh, people including Billy Kay, Mickey James, Chelsea Green. Uh, Tucker, uh, you know, of formerly of um, of uh, Heavy Machinery with Otis, um, you know, uh, Wesley Blake and uh, Kalisto, Bo Dallas, uh, Peyton Royce. So that means both the Iconics have been released. Um, and the biggest one so far, Samoa Joe. Dude, when Samoa Joe, when I heard it was Samoa Joe was getting released, I was like, wow. You know, uh, this, that was crazy. I mean, you know, he was, he had he'd been on a tear in NXT. Then he came up to the main roster, had a very, very emphatic debut when he was pretty much um, Triple H's like enforcer almost. Um, then, of course, injuries on top of injuries led him to uh, go to the commentary booth. And now they've let him go. Um, damn, you know. You know, I talk about this a lot on my channel. But as someone who has lost uh, many jobs, lost, you know, his job before in the past, like, dude, this is painful. It's during the pandemic, I had lost one of my jobs. And... Remember, we're still going through a pandemic. I know there's a vaccine, but we're still going through a pandemic. So get your get your vaccine, but please mask up until they say otherwise. Um, you know, uh, but yeah, like it's just been absolutely ridiculous. It's just, it's just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I think, um, I think it is honestly very. Um, I, I I think that this whole excuse of oh pandemic. It's kind of worn its welcome. Um, I get it that we still are going through a pandemic, but that can't be the reason for letting go of so many of these people. You know, budget cuts. I mean, dude, WrestleMania, really? Budget cuts? Are you shitting me? You know, if you really had to cut, had budget cuts, you would have probably done something very similar to what you did at Mania 36. So, I, I, I kind of call bullshit on that. Um, I mean, to be fair, these people were not being uh, utilized very well. You know, I mean, the fact that they even broke up the Iconics, like, are you kidding me? What's wrong with you? Seriously. Um, you know, and Tucker turned on Otis and then he just became a jobber. Uh, 
Wesley Blake hasn't really done much either since his uh, buddy from the Forgotten Sons. Oh, oh, hey, look, he's actually a Forgotten Son because we forgot about him. Jesus Christ. Anyway, um, you know, Chelsea Green, it's funny because all these people were so injury prone when they came to WWE, but when they're outside of WWE, when they, whether it's Impact Wrestling or even in the Indies or Ring of Honor, AEW, and New Japan, whatever, none of these people were so injury prone. Hell, even Chelsea Green, even when she was on NXT, yeah, she, she got injured. But then after she came back and she was part of the Robert Stone brand, I, which I don't know why the hell she left. She should have just stuck around with him. They, she was actually really, she was going on a bit of a, they were giving her a bit of a push. <laughs> but here we are. You know, I think she was supposed to be on SmackDown, but got injured on her first match. Like, I don't get what is going on. You know, it's like she, like I said, she became really injury prone after she came on to, to WWE. Like, that's crazy. Um, my, my heart breaks for all the, for all these people. Mickey James, man. Holy shit. I mean, to be fair though, Mickey James, she can pretty much, she can go anywhere she wants. She can go to AEW. She can go to Impact Wrestling if she wants. She can freaking show up in ROH tomorrow if she wants. She she is. I'm not even worried about Mickey James. Her husband is still work. Still is working. Her husband is the freaking NWA uh, heavyweight champion right now. He's got the ten pounds of gold. Damn it. So, and that too. NWA seems to be in a partnership with AEW. So there you go. Um, so I'm not too worried about Mickey James finding work after WWE, but man, the Iconics, I could very much see Billy Kay going to either Impact or AEW. I think Peyton Royce will probably join her husband in AEW. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about that later, but I just want to say this, man, it's just so tough. It is, it is, th this breaks my heart. It really does. Like every time it's almost like this every April, it seems like we're going to have to prepare ourselves to get our hearts broken because this is absolutely ridiculous you know in one part one side of me is almost glad that they are away from the wwe system because now they at least when they whenever they do find work which i hope which i know they will you know i'm my all my prayers go go for these people and i and i know and pray and hope that they will find something um to do in the wrestling world <laughs> But, damn. Like, damn. <laughs> um, it's like we have to prepare ourselves every year around this time to see a list of names that are going to keep coming to, uh, to uh, you know, from WWE to say, oh, all these people have been released. Like, damn, man. You know, um... You know, there are reports, there are rumors of Aleister Black getting let go. Um, but apparently there's also rumors that Aleister Black is getting a new gimmick. And, uh, you know, apparently they're recording, they've already recorded some vignettes. So that's cool. At least Aleister Black is sticking around. Although he should also probably, although I can see him also going to AEW within a year or two. But... I'm pretty sure after whatever gimmick they give him, he's gonna he's gonna probably just hand in his notice and be like, you know what, I'm done. I'm just gonna do what I gotta do, do my matches and, and leave, you know? So yeah, but uh oh, man. Like just seeing I'm just I'm I'm just reading this report right now and I I'm just seeing all these people uh leaving this comp leaving WWE. Like, losing their job, that's what really gets me, is the fact that they lost their jobs. That's what makes my heart, you know, go, you know, that, that just, that's what breaks my heart, you know, is that these people have lost their jobs. Um, it's many people's dream in the wrestling world to come to the WWE. At least it was at one point. And uh, to finally, you know, 
have those dreams just completely, you know, almost, you know, like the finger snap by Thanos. You know, it's like Vince McMahon is Thanos and he snapped his, snaps his fingers every April and all of a sudden a bunch of people don't feel so good anymore. You know? So, yeah. Jesus, man. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, Kalisto, like, they didn't do anything with him. I mean, Lucha House Party was great, but, I mean, he, he got to be Cruiserweight Champion. But they didn't really do much with him. So, I do hope maybe, perhaps, AAA or CMLL, I could see him going there. Um, Bo Dallas, you know, Bray Wyatt's brother. A lot of people speculated that it was Bo Dallas who was dressed up as The Fiend. Which it wasn't. Oh, by the way, I do have to say shout out to the Fiend for doing the you know the 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 um, Brody Lee uh, tribute. The when he did like this with the mustache and did that and did the yeah yeah yeah, that was great. I love that. But anyway, um, yeah, but both you know so Bray Wyatt is lucky to still have a job, but his brother not so much. So I mean, I definitely can see Bo Dallas though. Reinventing himself in the Indies and eventually coming back into the WWE fold. Um, I, think I could definitely see him within like a couple, three, three, four years or so. Let him just honestly let him go do a, do a run in the Indies, come back and then come back. You know, let him be in like, he's probably going to get in like super amazing shape. And Vince McMahon is going to just absolutely, you know, just go balls to the wall crazy for uh, Bo, and uh, he's gonna have a field day. He's gonna probably bring him back. That's kind of what I see happening. But for now, um, I hope Bo Dallas does get picked up by somebody pretty soon. Um, as far as speculation, I kind of got into that a little bit. Like I said, I can see Billy Kay either going to Impact or being a tag team with Peyton Royce and going to AEW. Um, Definitely Peyton Royce, I can see her doing that too. Joining her husband, uh, you know, Sean Spears in AEW, that could be one option. Or she could also go to Impact Wrestling. I wouldn't mind either. Um, Chelsea Green, definitely going back to Impact Wrestling. She was a household name there. She was, you know, she was the, you know, the, the half dead bride or the undead bride, I think. Uh, we could probably see that come back again. So obviously Matt Cardona is on Impact now, so you know I can see Chelsea Green going back and you know uh, going back with her husband on Impact Wrestling. That would be the there. Tucker, I don't know, man. Tucker is a sad story. Holy shit. Um, you know we thought there was gonna be a there was gonna be some sort of um, you know some sort of feud between Otis and Tucker, but that never happened. He just became a jobber. So yeah, so Tucker, damn dude, that's that's a sad story. I hope Tucker finds something. I, I think Tucker just needs to go to the Indies at this point. I would have Tucker, honestly, I, I could see Tucker going to Ring of Honor. I could see him there. That would be really cool. Um, AEW too, that would be, that would be amazing. Uh, Wesley Blake, I'd probably go, uh, I could see him in, I would love to see him in Ring of Honor too. I would love to see him, you know, maybe also do a run in the Indies. That could be something. Um, but Billy Kay, not Billy Kay, Mickey James, again, she could totally go to AEW and give a boost to their women's division. I would love to see Mickey James versus Britt Baker. That's the freaking match right there. That's a that would be a great match. I'm telling you. So yeah, Mickey James versus um, versus Britt Baker. Book it, Tony. Anyway, um, as far as uh, Samoa uh, Kalisto, like I said, I could see him in CMLL or AAA, um, or you know he could maybe he goes to New Japan. That would be cool. New Japan is strong. That would be really interesting. Samoa Joe, man. Samoa Joe can go anywhere he wants. <laughs> I would love to see him go back to Impact. That would be amazing. If he came back to Impact Wrestling, can you the the 
the buzz that he would get when he comes back. That would be that would be cool, and he can be that killer again. We finally we can hear Joe's gonna kill you once again. Uh, AEW that would be cool too. You know, Miro versus Samoa Joe would be a good match. Um, I mean, Joe is just fan. Joe is, uh, is is damn good, dude. Joe is really good, and I would love to see him do anything. Um, I would love to see him in New Japan. That would be fantastic as well. Uh, Joe Samoa Joe versus uh, Tomohiro Ishii. Samoa Joe, like in that in the never open weight division. Like if 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 you put him in the open weight division, he's he's golden. He is golden. So that would be cool. Samoa Joe versus John Moxley, dude. I freaking need that match. Like I need full on killer Samoa Joe versus psychopath, unscripted violence, John Moxley. That's the match we need to see. You know, I know Joe and Moxley have had matches in WWE, but give me this match outside of WWE. That's a money match. But yeah, like Samoa Joe, man, I, honestly, I can see him anywhere and just completely thriving. But people like Tucker and Wesley Blake, and those are sad stories because they didn't really get to do much in WWE and they just got released. So nobody really knows who they are. And now they basically have to go from, you know, uh, you know, go from the ground up. Although apparently Tucker was particularly happy about getting released from WWE. Perhaps he asked for his release. So he got it. Um, but dude, all I can do is wish, hope that things get better for these people. So, you know, my heart goes out to them and I feel terrible about it. But I hope that they find something soon. Hope we see them in a wrestling ring very soon. Um, I know we're still in the midst of a pandemic, but you know, things are opening up again, you know, slowly but surely. Hopefully it's a little easier for them to find work, but man, sorry. I know I'm just taking too much. I'm just being silent a lot, but fuck, holy shit. I'm trying not to say the F, drop the F bomb here, but God damn, you know. Again, like I said, my heart goes out to these people. They work so hard day in and day out to entertain us. They put their bodies on the line um, just for our enjoyment. And this is how they get treated. Like, what the hell? This is not fair. <sighs> so I hope they find work soon. I really do. But with that being said, thank you for watching this video. Uh, let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments, all that jazz. And yeah, that's pretty much it. This is Sid signing off. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.